Hello everyone, this is Kaiser of War here, and I wanted to talk about Blaze Blue's uh, current silence at the moment. Um, the only thing that we really know about Blaze Blue coming up is Blaze Blue cross tag battle gang onto Xbox, which is great. But I wanted to talk about other things and talk about like what's happening now and what's going to happen in the future. Um, spoiler alert, I have no idea what's going to happen in the future, but still. <laughs> um, but I wanted to go all the way back to Mori leaving Arc System Works, right? Mori left Arc, uh, Arc System Works on September 24th, or at least he announced that he left um, on September 24th. And it was a weird thing to like understand at first because like Mori, you know, like one of the guys who's leading one of Arc System Works' original games, Blaze Blue, is now leaving the company. And I kept thinking, like, man, that's that's terrible. Like, honestly, that's really sad. But like, you know, if Mori needs a break or he just needs to retire, that's okay. But something about it just didn't feel right to me. You know, we don't know why he left Arxis. He never said anything like that. Um, we can only assume that either he retired or the company let him go. But seeing how Mori was leading Blaze Blue, I don't see why they would let him go. You know, Blaze was one of their main franchises, like one of their very few original franchises at Arc System Works. And I couldn't imagine that they would just let Mori go. I don't know if he left himself, which that's my theory. I can't really give a good basis on why I believe that, but I feel like maybe Mori left of his own will. I want to talk about two factors in particular, Cross Tag Bow and Blaze Blue Alternative Dark War. Cross System Activation Confirmed. So starting off with Blaze Blue Cross Tag Bow, Cross Tag Battle was a mess, and even though I like the game now, its launch, and even before, actually even before its launch, up to its launch, the game was done very dirty by Arc System Works and Mori and Team Blue and whoever else was behind the game. It had a lot of issues going into it. Even though they were doing some good things, like adding an English dub, like when they did in Essential Fiction, um, you know, they were trying to make the game more accessible to players who never played these games before, that kind of thing. It it wasn't handled in the best way. A lot of people just did not like Cross Tag Battle either for like how to handle the DLC or just did not like how the game played. But despite that, it actually did sell fairly well. It didn't flop, but it didn't like exceed, I guess, Arc System Works expectations. I don't know, but they didn't really, from far as my understanding, they didn't really comment on how well the game did because after the game released, you know, they just released a DLC and then after that, they gave like a really long period of time with no updates. Like after the final pack of DLC was released, it was like a, like a really long gap between that, the final pack for 1.0 and then 2.0. And it, it, was, it was a really long time. And like, it, it, it was an issue, right? It was an issue. They were not handling Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle as well as they could have because they kind of shot themselves in the foot even before the game released. And so that was kind of a sore spot. And it kind of just, and because that was the, really the only thing that was uh, being done with Blaze at the time, it kind of just soured people on the whole thing. I don't know how the Japanese felt about Blaze Blue uh, Cross Tag Battle, but I know a lot of Westerners either did not like it or just did like it. You know, it's, it's a, it, was a really, it was a really mixed thing between the two of them. Like, I have never seen a Blaze Blue property so mixed before. And yeah, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle had the draw of bringing in different franchises like Persona 4, Undernight, Ruby, that kind of thing. But even so, the game kind of just, it, it, it was a, it, it was a weird, weird situation. It was a weird deal, right? It was, it was a completely weird deal. Everything just did not go well. They did not handle the game as well as they could have. There were so many issues, even before the game came out. And when the game came out, you know, people did play it, right? But because of how the DLC worked and how the you know how everything was handled, how content was getting into the game, a lot of people dropped off and never came back. A lot of people did come back around to 2.0, but keep in mind from like the last DLC pack, uh, 1.0 to like let's say 1.5 because they released Heart, Seth, Teddy, and Naruto around that time. It was a big gap of time, right? It was a huge gap of time, and it was another long period of time until 2.0 came out. So suffice to say, a lot of people just did not come back to Cross Tag Battle and like. You know, you only have you only have one chance to make a good first impression. Some cross tag in a lot of people's eyes did not do that. So that was like another that was like one major sore point for the Blazable series. And now we get to talk about Blazable Alternative Dark War, which I personally believe was like kind of like the tipping point of Mori leaving Arxis. I don't have any concrete uh, details for this and I have no good explanation for it, but at least hear me out. 
So Blaze Will Turn of Dark War was a game Mori had been talking about for like ever since like like Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle became a thing, he said he was gonna make a Blaze Blue, like have a Blaze Blue mobile game developed. We already knew that. A lot of people didn't take too kind to that, but that was something that was already known. It just didn't happen for like three years, right? So when Blaze Blue Alternative Dark War did come out, uh, it was Japanese exclusive. So a lot of people in the West would not play it unless you would have to go out of your way to do so, including me, right? Um, and then so like, the thing about Blaze Blue Alternative Dark War is that like, it's a game I felt, I think, I think the game was supposed to be a way to uh, get more people into Blaze Blue. The game feels a lot like Fate Grand Order in like terms of like feel of it. And Fate Grand Order is a big mobile game that got people into Fate, right? And I want to believe that was what Moy was going for. Obviously, he already said this was going to happen, right? But like the way that the game kind of feels like Fate, right? And has even some small similarities to Fate. I feel like they were going to use Alternative Dark War to bring more people into Blaze Blue, right? Obviously, mobile games made from pre-established franchises, their whole point is to make money and get more people into that franchise and get more money. So, obviously. And I think that just didn't work. Because, like, Blaze Blue Alternative Dark War was just not a game I feel was going to appeal to a lot of people. Because Blaze Blue, even in Japan, is not a gigantic franchise, right? You know, it's, it's big, from my understanding. But it's not, like, huge to everyone would know it, especially not how like games like Guilty Gear are now, right? Um, and it's just, it wasn't big enough, you know? And on top of that, again, it was just Japanese exclusive, but some of these mobile games stay in Japan until they, you know, get the ability to come over for, like years later, if, you know? And if, if it didn't last too long, it only lasted 11 months before it shut down. And that's what, that's what kind of bums me out because I actually did have my time playing it. Granted, the game was, for, for my devices, like I, I used three different phones to play this game on. <laughs> did not work on either of them. It always crashed. And that kind of turned me off of Blaze Blue Alternative Dark War. A lot of people didn't have their problems, but I think my phone was just garbage. That's probably why. But it turned me off because of how, like there was a, there was a lot of technical issues with the game from my experience, right? But from my experience, I had a lot of technical issues with the games. My phones aren't, my the various phones I use are pretty new. So I don't know if it was just me or just the game itself, but the point is the technical issues were a thing that existed, right? But a lot of my friends who really like Blaze would really like the game, if you could understand it, because you have to deal with like translations or if you just knew Japanese, good luck, you know? You either have to like, you know, look at translations who put people put on YouTube, which was a good thing. There's a lot of people I'm glad that were able to translate the game and like translate the story of the game, put it on YouTube so people could understand the story of it. And that's a really good thing. But the game was just, it was held up with so many factors. It was a Blazable game, so really only Blazable fans would even like the game. And it just, it didn't last enough. And I feel like as it got closer to the end, they did they did this uh, collaboration with Grand Blue Fantasy. And Grand Blue Fantasy is a massive mobile game market in Japan, right? Like, it's huge over there. Grand Blue Fantasy is a massive franchise, and hell, even Arxis worked with Psy Games to create Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, so they did have a relationship with each other, right? So I wanted to believe that maybe, like, and this is probably my just little theory to this, that as the game went on, they knew something was going to happen, right? So they went to get Grand Blue Fantasy, like some, like like some of the characters from Grand Blue Fantasy, as a way to attract people to Blaze Wall Turner Dark War through this collaboration. Now that could e they could easily just say, "Hey, we just want to collab," but a lot of collabs are just marketing stunts, right? So to get people like fans of blah 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 to get into our mobile game, right? And Grand Blue Fantasy, seeing how big that is. I feel like they were going to use that as a way to pull people from maybe Grand Blue or people who were fans of Grand Blue into Blaze Ball Turner Dark War to play it, and it just didn't work. That's my little theory on it, and that just didn't work at all. And that it's it's kind of sad, really. Plus, that was the only collaboration they ever had a chance to have, which was really sad because I would have loved if the game lasted longer. They would have more collabs, but I feel like the whole Grand Blue collab thing was a last-minute effort to try to save this game, and it just didn't work. So. And understandably, Mori and the team and everyone who was behind Alternative Dark War were bummed out. I don't blame them whatsoever because they put a lot of work, like three years. Like, let's say that the game was being made for those three years, right? That's three years of development time for your game to last 11 months before being shut down. 
three years compared to our 11 months is a long time, right? So that kind of sucks that the game didn't get to last long as much as it did. I'm glad to see some characters like Juson, White Justice, uh, those kind of the characters that finally get into this game, even though they were teased in essential fiction. It was nice to see that, but it, the game just did not last long enough. And it, I just guess it just didn't get the numbers and the people that it needed to get to keep itself sustained. I didn't get reminded of this interview that the CEO of Arc System Works, Minoru Kido Oka, had with IGN around August about how they want to collaborate with different IPs and the like. And it kind of, it was kind of weird because like this interview came shortly, like not too long before, but they, they did come before Mori's departure from Arc System Works. And that kind of just clicked in my head. It's like, wait a minute, that don't sound right, right? So. I wanted to go over the interview just a little bit, and it really only matters with the Blazable part at the very end, but I want to do read the uh, first parts to try to try to get this whole thing in like a nice little bow and see if like there's anything that can tell me about what this has to do with Blazable, right? Uh, it says, at EVO 2022, IGN spoke with Kido Oka, who has said in the past, Arc System Works has been very passive with regards to collaborating with other IPs, with IP holders being the ones coming to them with offers for collaboration. Kido Oka wants to change that attitude. Moving forward, Kido Oka says the studio plans to be less passive in pursuing partnership opportunities. Specifically, Kido Oka wants Arc System Works to create games that will resonate with Western audiences. Whether that means licenses with global appeal like Dragon Ball or working with franchises that originate in the West remains to be seen. We want to expand fighting game you know, communities through IP, Kitaoka told IGN. In the future, if we have such an opportunity, we are actively pushing to collaborate with new IP holders. In the long run, Kitaoka's dream is to develop a new Arc System Works IP planned and developed in the US. Beyond Dragon Ball, Arc System Works has collaborated with a number of different IP holders in the past working on games featuring Grand Blue, Persona, One Piece, and more. But the next step for the studio could be partnering with companies to create new fighting games featuring characters with great Western appeal. However, even with a widened focus on partnerships, Arc System Works isn't leaving its original franchises behind. Guilty Gear Strive is still early in its life cycle and asks for Blaze Blue? I have a plan, said Kido Oka. His first priority is expanding Guilty Gear Strive, but beyond that, he is also consistently, constantly thinking about new generations of fighting games, and Blazeful could be a part of it. He also said that the Blazeful IP has a lot of possibilities and genres than fighting games as well. But yeah, that's pretty much my whole video, I guess, speculating about this whole thing. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I really love the Blazeful series. Like, honestly, without, <laughs> without Blazeful, I wouldn't be here really today doing the things I do or writing the things I write. So it's, I, I would have never expected in all my years that Blaze Blue was going to be in this state. Maury's the guy who creates the lore. He created the characters. So without him, what were we going to do? You know, is Blaze Blue going to continue? Is it going to be in like maybe mobile hell? Like, you know, they're going to turn into a bunch of other mobile games or they're just going to just do nothing with the franchise for years upon years. Because if Maury's, if they just wipe Maury's name off the board of directors, even before he announced his departure, he's not coming back. So even more, you know, I, I hope Mori, you know, gets bet more work because honestly, it, it would suck if he just didn't get anything anymore. But like, in regards of Mori doing something for Blaze, well, that's that those days are over. You know, I don't think Mori's gonna come back to Arc System Works, and he can't do anything with Blaze anymore unless he just unless they somehow invite him back in. But I don't see that happening. I really don't see that happening at all. A lot of people who like a lot of like big people who leave companies, they just leave. You know, Mori could easily leave for retirement. There's nothing wrong with that. He can be easily leaving for just retirement purposes. And that's okay. But all this just sounds weird to me. And I don't like it one bit. I just don't like it at all. And it's bugging the hell out of me trying to figure it out. <laughs> and maybe I'm not supposed to figure it out. You know, maybe, maybe it's that one that thing where I'm just like not supposed to think too hard about it. Maybe it's just like, you know, more just left just because he wanted to. Maybe he was just tired. You know, maybe he's exhausted. Maybe he's just done making games. And I got to stop the video right here because Mori did say that he was he still going to continue his endeavors in the game industry. He's not done, you know, going out there to make games. So that's a good thing. He's still going to keep on trucking. It's just that, you know, maybe he's not going to do anything with Blaze Blue anymore. So that's that's why I wanted to be clear on before I kept talking. So if I say anything about Mori giving up and never doing anything ever again, that was just me recording and not really thinking about what Maury said in that uh, thing that in that statement he posted to Twitter. Sorry. <laughs>
a lot of companies out there just let their fight game franchises just straight up rot and do nothing with them anymore. Games they spent years creating, putting out and getting fans only for them just to sit in a cellar and rot to death. Now, do I really think they're gonna do that with Blaze Blue? No, I don't think Arsis is just gonna let Blaze Blue sit. They did say, they did explicitly say, the CEO did say that they were gonna do more with Blaze Blue. But, you know, without Mori at the helm, things are just gonna be weird, you know what I mean? The guy is Blaze Blue. You know, it's like, it's like taking Daisuke away from Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear ain't Guilty Gear without Daisuke. And the same goes for Blaze Blue. Blaze Blue just isn't the same without Mori. Mori's the one coming up with the stories, the characters, designs, all that stuff, right? So really, without Mori, Blaze Blue is just, it, it, it just wouldn't be the same. And that's, that's what kind of scares me, you know? Like, you know, a lot of people were understandably saddened by this because like, Blaze Blue is Mori. You know, without it, it's just like, who, who would direct the franchise? I mean, who would, you know what I mean? That's the, it's that kind of feeling. Like who, if you're, if you get that feeling in your head, like who would do this if the guy who created the franchise didn't do it, you know what I mean? I mean, look what happened like to series like Metal Gear. You take Kojima off Metal Gear and see what happens, that kind of thing. That's what happens when I feel like you take Mori away from Blaze Blue. That's his series, you know? You can't do that, but you know, hey, we can't really talk about that now because it's, you know, it's kind of over, you know? Mori's gone from Arc System Works and oh, I hope, and I really do, I do read it, I hope he finds work elsewhere. Or at the very least, you know, I hope, like, you know, he gets successful somewhere. Because he really does deserve it, man. Like, he's been busting his ass doing Blaze Blue for all these years. I mean, it's been 10 years. Well, 10 plus years now. And, like, I, I would like to see him do more series if he's able to, you know. But Blaze Blue is like, you work on this one thing for so long. And then, you know, maybe some things, some things just didn't work out, right? And then you just maybe have to take a step back from the series or maybe just higher ups at the company that you know manage and own your series they don't they're just done with you or maybe you're just you're just tired yourself and i feel like that maybe could have happened with more maybe you just need to take a break from blaze because there's a lot of blaze has been on a weird weird i can't say decline or anything uh, but blaze has been in this weird state from the beginning of even the beginning of cross tag battle and even like maybe during central fiction uh all the way to Alternative Dark War and all the way to now, you know? So, Blaze Blue is not going anywhere. I I, I don't, I, a lot of people say the series is gonna be dead. I don't personally think the series is gonna be dead. It's just, it's gonna be in a different state than it is, you know? Like, it's gonna be a bit different than what we're used to if, they just, if they're gonna decide to make more Blaze Blue media, right? Like, if they make more Blaze Blue games, it just won't be the same as we're used to. That's what I feel. And, that's a scary thought, you know, to think one of your favorite franchises just won't feel the same. Cause like, you know, that's what that's how some series just straight up just don't just lose people because they aren't made by the people who originally made it. And to be honest, I don't see anyone else doing Blaze Blue like Mori did, you know? It just I don't I just don't see it. Just it's weird, you know? But like I'm I don't know what to think, really. I really don't know what to think. I don't see Arxis just killing the series dead. But as for a new game, I don't see that coming for, I mean, like a full new fighting game, I don't see that coming for like a little while. At the very least, I don't think that's gonna be for just a little bit while. And I honestly don't know what, what's gonna happen in the future. I really don't know. And it's, it's it's really scary thinking about it though, you know? But I feel like in the meantime, we're not gonna get anything Blazer related. At least now, except Chaos Effect, right? The mobile game, the Chaos Effect, that's pretty much the Outside of like Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle getting onto um, Xbox, right? K Chaos Effect is the only thing we have, and it is, it's not really a Blaze Blue. It's not a Blaze Blue title game. It's just called Chaos Effect. I don't, don't know when it's released because it's still in like st we're still in pre-registration mode here. So, but considering this came out sh like so close to Mori's departure, it, it feels kind of weird. A lot of this stuff just feels weird. I don't know because I am not an ins I don't have an insider source in Arsis. I don't know anything about what goes on in Arsis. I can only really just guess at things that I've seen out there. But and it, and it weirds me out too because another thing that I found weird is that Mori did post up a picture of a character from Alternative Dark War. His name is Hearn or Hearn. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he was one of I guess the seemingly main antagonists of Blades of Alternative Dark War, right? Mori posted the picture of him. 
and it revealed to he is Toya from the X Blade series. But later on, Mori deleted the tweet, and I can only assume that maybe he deleted it because, you know, Arxis won't let him post it or something like that. Maybe it was spoiler or something. I don't know. But the point is, like, Mori went to post that picture not too long after he departed Arx um, Arxis, and then the picture and then the image is gone. Like, people have the image, but I mean, on Mori's Twitter account, it's gone. So I don't know if like Mori had to delete it because maybe Arx, maybe someone from Arxis told him to not do that anymore since he's not with the company anymore. Uh, if that's the case, that's kind of messed up. So <laughs> just just saying, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing at this point. A lot of this video is just speculation and guessing and all that junk. I have no idea what's going on. So pretty much that's all I can really say about that. So until we see something more about Blazable in the future, that's all I can really say. Um, so while we're so while I'm sitting here and speculating, please tell me what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you think Blaze Blue can still stand on its own without Mori at the helm? What do you think is going to happen to Blaze Blue later on? You know, if Blaze Blue is going to stay in like Arc System's fault, or is Blaze Blue going to continue onwards? I personally believe Blaze Blue is going to continue onwards, with maybe someone else directing it, but we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. So uh, that's all I can really say. I'm out, guys. Peace, everyone. Hope you all have a great day. See you all next time.